very good morning dear students today we start with a new lesson that's lesson 3.3 a crow in the house it's on page 64 of your textbook hope you'll have your pencils with you all so you can mark the meanings of the words that i am giving you now this story is from a collection by uh, written by ruskin born a writer or a, no, a story writer generally he used to write stories for children and mostly about nature things in nature like about animals so uh, it was gen it's and it's generally meant for children to read yes now in this story the story is about a crow uh, how the author or the main child in this story finds the crow takes care of it the activities of the crow and as the as the crow is growing up everything that it does how it gets attached to the members of the house and becomes a part of the family and ultimately all these activities lead to its very sad and untimely death means it dies very early okay so that is the story of the crow now let's start the young crow had fallen from its nest and was fluttering about on the road in danger of being crushed by a cart or a tonga or seized by a cat. So when this child was walking, he found the crow. Young crow means a, it must be very small, not very, it's not full grown, so maybe it couldn't fly properly. Okay. And it had fallen from its nest and was fluttering. Fluttering means trying to fly about. Yes, moving its wings about on the road. Now, I can ask you a question. Why or how do you think the crow must have fallen down? Maybe the crow was too young and it was learning to fly and it couldn't fly. It fell down. Or maybe the nest was toppled down by some other huge animal, maybe a cat or some other creature who climbed up trying to uh, catch the crow from the nest. And so he flew down but couldn't fly. So he landed on to the road. Or it could be any other reason. Maybe there was a strong wind which uh, upturned the nest and so the crow, crow fell down. Okay. So these should all be your imagination. Okay. But realistic, not something that's uh, like, you know, so it's a fairy came or something like that. So, okay. Now, in danger of being crushed by a cart or a tonga. What is a tonga? It's a horse carriage. Yes. A cart being pulled by a horse is a tonga. Or seized. Seized means to catch very tightly. So maybe a cat. If the cat, you know, cats attack birds. So if it had seen the crow helpless on the road, it would have certainly seized it. When I picked it up and brought it home. So he saw it. Because it would may have met with the, its life was in danger. It may have met with an accident or been crushed or killed. So that's why it brought, he, the boy brought the crow home. It was in a sorry condition. Sorry condition means in a very bad state. Maybe its wing was broken. Maybe it was very, I mean, almost being unconscious, almost about to die. Beak gaping and head dropping. Beak gaping means, you know, the beak, the mouth of the crow. Gaping means panting. Okay, open mouth. And head dropping means the head was just falling down. It was not able to keep even its head up straight. And so we did not expect it to live. But grandfather and I did our best to bring it round. Bring it round means what? Bring it round means to try to revive it, bring it back to consciousness. Okay? Bring it back to its senses. We fed it by prizing its beak gently open with a pencil. Prizing means forcing open. Like trying to hold both the beaks and opening it. Possibly. Yes, pushing in a little bread and milk and then removing the pencil to allow it to swallow. So with the help of the pencil, they try to open the beaks, the beak and then push some food in and then lift it so that it could swallow. We varied this diet, means changed the diet a little bit. Not every day bread and milk, we gave some other stuff also. With occasional doses of grandmother's homemade plum wine. So, along with the milk, bread and other things, 
also gave him sometimes a little bit of plum wine which was made by his grandmother. And as a result, the young crow was soon on the road to recovery. And very soon, as a result of all this effort by the grandfather and grandson, the crow recovered slowly. He was offered his freedom, but he did not take it. Instead, he made himself at home in the house. Means what? After he got all right, naturally, they didn't want to keep the crow in the house. So they allowed him, kept put him out in the garden and allowed him to go. But he did not go. He wanted to stay along with them. It's because he had found him when he was small and maybe according to the crow, they were the only family or only members he knew. Okay. Aunt Mabel, grand, uh, grandmother Aunt Mabel and even some of grandfather's pets objected. But there was no way of getting rid of the bird. He took over the administration of the house. Administration means the working of the house. Means it's, it was like as if he ruled the house and everything in the house was done or being done or had to be done according to his likes and his dislikes. Okay, that's what it meant. We were not sure that he was male, but we called him Caesar. So Caesar is a male name, but they didn't know what else to call him because they were not sure about his gender. But long before long, Caesar was joining us at meal times besides finding his own grubs or beetles in the garden. So whenever they ate food, he used to come along with them to eat food. And besides eating what they gave him or eating what they ate, he also went in the garden and found his own little bugs and uh, little grubs. Do you know what the grubs are? Small worms. So beetles and worms. He danced about on the dining table and gave us no peace until he had been given his small bowl of meat and soup and vegetables. So until they gave him what he wanted, he used to just literally harass them. He was always restless, fidgeting. Fidgeting means... Um, Making movements with your hands and legs, okay? Fidgeting, you're always, uh, you are, maybe always your fingers are, uh, you say in Hindi, na, kujli ho rahe, kya ungli mein kujli ho rahe, because you're always fidgeting. You're always touching something or other. So, and you naturally, you know, you use your hands to touch. Yes? Investing, investigating things. So, he was always very inquisitive to know what was being done, how it's being done. Why it's being done, coming to investigate, see when you're doing something, he would always come to watch you and observe you. He would hop across a table to empty a matchbox of its contents. Or rip, rip means tear, okay, the daily paper to shreds. So, if you saw the paper, he would tear it to bits, small, small bits. Shreds means small, small bits. Or he would empty the matchbox or he would or overturn a vase of flowers or tuck at the tail of one that would off the door. So he would be literally harassing almost everybody. The crow will be the ruin of us, grumbled grandmother, picking marigolds off the carpet. So can't you keep him in the cage? So what did she do? That means the crow had, dropped, had just dropped the vase. Marigolds are flowers. And these flowers were all over the carpet. So she, the grandmother got this, had to do this extra work of picking up the flowers, whichever the crow dropped and made into pieces. Why? We did try keeping Caesar in a cage. But he was so angry and objected with such fierce cawing. Cawing is a sound that he makes. And flapping that it was better for our nerves and peace of mind to give him the run of the house. It means that when they put him in the cage, they were so fed up of his things that he did in troubling them in destroying everything that they decided to put him in a cage okay you don't want to go free so you just live in the cage but then that was even worse because he made so much of noise that everyone started getting a headache and that was there was no peace in the house with the noise that he made that they decided that let him be free run of the house means be free to do whatever he wanted in the house he did not show any inclination that to join the other crows in the banyan tree so, they did have a banyan tree wherein all the crows or many crows gathered. But this fellow did not want to join them. He wanted to be in the house with the human he knew. Okay. 
so any inclination means any desire or any um what do you say want to do something okay when you're saying inclination means wanting to do something so the he not show any interest in doing anything else but all this nonstop grandfather said he, this was because he was really a jungle crow a raven of sort and probably felt a little contempt contemptuous of very ordinary carrion crows so what grandfather said maybe he did not want to join the other crows because he was a raven he was not a a, a regular crow that you find over here now a raven is generally darker in color and huge or bigger in size than the uh, regular crows and they are they are generally the wild crow who which you find in the jungle and probably probably felt a little contemptuous means um to show no respect you are not bothered about them at all they are like nobody to you so according to grandfather this these uh, must have felt that these regular crows which are there so many in number on the grand banyan tree are like nobody are like not worth uh, playing with or not worth going around with okay um okay now what do you mean by very ordinary carrion crows carrion or any creature carrion is any creature which eats or lives on or feeds on dead flesh you're talking of dead and rotting flesh like in the jungle you will find the vultures they eat the carrion that is anything else killed by another creature and uh, you can see left over okay that the vultures will eat they will not hunt but they will eat whatever is left over by others maybe even if it's rot but it seemed to me that caesar having grown used to living with humans on equal terms had become snobbish and did not wish to mix with his own kind so snobbish means become very proud so he had most probably become so proud that he did not want to mix with anyone else yes he felt that anyone else of even of even if it was someone of his own kind he felt that why should i mix with other crows when i can just live with my human counterpart he would even squabble with harold the hornbill so that means he even had a hornbill by the name of harold and he was squabble means trouble him you know make a lot of noise making noise okay and uh, it's like a a small argument by making a lot of noise quack, quack. and now of course they can't talk and they can't argue but that's the noise that they would both make to when they fight with each other perching on top of harold's cage so what what he would do he would go on top of harold's cage and he would peck at the bird's feet so harold would swear and scold and try to catch caesar through the bars so harold was in the cage and this fellow was free and so he used to go and harass the little the bird in time caesar learned to talk a little as ravens sometimes do in cracked throaty voice means his voice was very thick yes and cracked means not very clear he would sit for hours outside the window banging on the glass with his beak and calling hello hello he seemed to apologize the click of to sorry to recognize the click of the gate when i came from school and would come to the door with a hop skip and jump saying hello hello i had taught him to sit on my arm and say kiss kiss when he placed his head gently against my mouth so the boy had taught him to speak the words hello and also kiss one on one of aunt mabel's ways visit caesar alighted on her arm and crackled kiss kiss so what he did one day aunt mabel came to visit them and this caesar went and sat on her arm and said kiss kiss 
Aunt Mabel was delighted and probably flattered. Means, flattered means, uh, what do you say you know, in, in uh, Hindi? Kane ki jhaad pe chada ge. Okay, so that's what to make someone feel very important or like as if you are very good, a very good person, you are very important person. And she thought, oh, I'm so important that he's asking me for a kiss. And leaned forward for a kiss. But Caesar's attention shifted to my aunt's gleaming spectacles. Gleaming means spectacles, shining. So instead of giving her a kiss, he, he noticed her spectacles which were shining a lot. And he knocked them off. What he did? He threw them down or removed them from her face. Aunt Mabel never was a success with a pet. So Aunt Mabel was not really fond a person fond of animals. But... Because Caesar had asked her for a kiss, she felt very, very happy. And what this fellow does? Drops her specs. Pet or pest, grandmothers insisted that Caesar was a pest in spite of his engaging habits. Engaging means they keep you busy all the time. You are all the time busy if you are with Caesar because you had. he used to make it such a mess that you had to keep on correcting it. Like the flowers, you see grandmother was... Uh, lifting all the carrying all the flowers that he had dropped on the carpet he restricted his activities to our our house it had would not been so bad but he took to visiting neighbors houses and stealing pens and pencils hair ribbons combs keys shuttlecocks toothbrushes and false teeth so he did not just restrict himself to their house but he also went to the neighbor's house and collected all these things he was specially fond of toothbrushes and made a collection of them on top of the cupboard in my room. Most of the neighbors were rep represented in our house by a toothbrush. That means he was so fond of toothbrushes that he went to almost every neighbor's house and got a toothbrush. So, if you actually looked at the collection of toothbrushes, you pick any brush, one neighbor's name will be said. Okay. So, every toothbrush belonged to some neighbor or other. Clothes pegs fascinated him. The you know, clothes pin which you dry your clothes outside and you put a pin on the top. That's called a clothes peg. Neighbors would return home from the bazaar to find their washing lying on the mud and no sign of the peg. So what he did whenever they dried their clothes outside, he took all their pegs and went away and so naturally the clothes went flying about in the wind and because of that always, always getting dirty. These two found their way to the top of my cupboard. So also these pegs also were on top of all on of this his cupboard. Now this led to uh, one minute. Huh? It was Caesar's gardening activities that finally led to disaster. So because of these activities of his going in and eating other people's plants, eating the fruits, it and uh, hiding and doing all this rubbish things. This put him in trouble. He was helping himself to our neighbor's beans when a stick was flung at him, breaking his leg. So what happened? He went in the neighbor's garden and he was nicely eating their beans. So naturally they threw a stick at him. It, I carried the unfortunate bird home and grandfather and I washed and bandaged his leg as best we could. But it would not mend. It would not become all right. Okay, mend means become all right. It had, he had broken his leg, but it was not becoming all right. Caesar hung his head and no longer talked. He became so sad. He grew weaker day by day, refusing to eat. An occasional sip of grandmother's homemade wine was all that kept him going. So the only thing he really had was grandmother's who made wine he refused to eat anything else one morning i found him dead on the sofa his legs stiff in the air poor caesar his anti-social bath had led him to his early end now uh, early end is death okay so he died because of his anti-social elements activities naturally now those people threw a stick at him and his leg broke and then he gave up on living. Yes, like you studied uh, a, a, a story, I don't know whether you know about Hugh and John C. He did, he just gave up living. 
I dug a shallow grave in the garden. Shallow means not very deep. And buried him there along with his toothbrushes and bag, clothes bags he had taken so much trouble to collect. So all the things that he had taken so much trouble to collect, the toothbrushes, the, the bags, all that made a bundle and put it all inside with Caesar in his grave. Okay. Now this story is from Grandfather's Private Zoo written by Raskin. Now you are also supposed to do I hope you'll read the lesson at least twice, okay? And then I want you all to do this activity that is there here. The one that is fine on antonyms from the story book will be from your textbook. And B part is now you find synonyms is not necessary from your textbook. Also, you will do, do fourth one, uh, which is uh, make a, a proper sequence of all the events that they are giving you. Like Caesar begins to upset things at home. Young crow is saved by the narrator. Crow is named Caesar. Caesar objects to being caged. Neighbors bring a stick at Caesar. Caesar begins to trouble neighbors. Caesar passes away. All this will put in the proper order. Whether they are first, second, third, fourth. You put them in the order and write them. Okay. So, I do have, hope you all have a good day. Don't forget very much to please write your... Uh, sorry, read your lesson at least twice. Thank you and have a good day.